Inc. What's the Gonzo was written by Andrew Gattel, and Judith Hunt drew the pictures. Hey, Gonzo, asked Baby Fozzie, do you want to hear a great joke about a chicken? Sorry, not right now, Baby Gonzo replied. I'm busy working on my most mysterious case. Detective Gonzo called this puzzling case the incredible mystery of me. Gonzo wanted to figure out exactly what he was. Maybe you're a rare jungle bird, suggested Baby Rolf. Or a monkey with a banana nose, said Baby Piggy. I think you might be a blue chicken, said Fozzie, who was particularly fond of chicken jokes. Gonzo shook his head. He knew he wasn't a jungle bird, or a monkey, or a chicken. The incredible mystery of me remained a mystery. While the other babies settled down to nap, Detective Gonzo searched the nursery for clues. If there was a creature that looked like me, Maybe it could help find the answer, he said. It's too bad nobody looks like me. Don't be too sure, handsome, said a very familiar voice. Gonzo spun around and came nose to nose with his image in the mirror. Mmm, he thought. I better investigate. Gonzo stood on one foot. So did the Gonzo in the mirror. He took off his hat and threw it over his shoulder. So did his mirror image. He tickled his nose. So did the mirror, Gonzo. All that tickling made Gonzo's nose itch. Ah, ah, achoo, he sneezed. Gazunai said his image. Then it held out a hand. Why don't you step over to this side of the mirror? Very, very strange said Gonzo, but I'll try anything once. Gonzo stepped through the mirror and found himself standing next to the other little blue creature. My name is Zonzo, said the creature. At last, Gonzo shouted, someone who looks like me. This is great. Maybe you can tell me what I am. Sorry, I can't. Zonzo said. In fact, I've never heard anyone ask a question like that before. But I can take you to see the smartest person I know. With that, Zonzo grabbed his beanie and pogo stick and took Gonzo to meet his mother. Momzo was at home, ironing tuna fish sandwiches. That's a pretty interesting way to make lunch, said Gonzo. That's nothing, replied Zonzo. You should see how the laundry looks when it pops out of the toaster. Zonzo introduced Gonzo to his mother. He asked her if she could tell Gonzo exactly what he was. No, I can't, she replied. But that's an interesting question. Let's go ask your Aunt Tonzo. Momzo put away her ironing and took them to see Tonzo. Aunt Tonzo was an astronaut. When Gonzo, Zonzo, and Momzo arrived, she was practicing eating in space. After dessert, she joined them and listened to Gonzo's question. I've traveled zillions of miles through the galaxy, said Tonzo, and there's one thing I know for certain. You're definitely not a babbling blue-eyed beast from the planet Bingo. Well, that's a relief, said Gonzo. Let's go and see Dr. Donzo, suggested Tonzo. He's a pretty smart fellow. I bet he can help. Dr. Donzo was an eye doctor. When he heard why Gonzo had come, he asked him to read the chart on the wall. Yes, yes, a very interesting case, said the doctor. I can't answer your question, Gonzo, but I can tell you that your eyesight is excellent. Thanks, Doc, said Gonzo. The doctor suggested that they pay a visit to Admiral Bronzo. Perhaps he knows the answer, said Dr. Donzo. Gonzo
Pinto and his new friends found Admiral Bronzo sailing. The Admiral listened as Gonzo explained why he had come. You're too small to be a blue whale and too blue to be a white fish, said Bronzo, who was an expert on sea creatures. And I can't swim a stroke, added Gonzo. Then you must be some kind of landlubber, replied the Admiral. Come with me and we'll see what we can discover. Admiral Bronzo led Gonzo, Zonzo, Momzo, Aunt Tonzo, and Dr. Donzo on a search all over town. At the circus, they spoke to the Flying Flonzos, the Clown Clonzo, and Alfonso, the Magnificent Lion Tamer. They didn't know what Gonzo was, but they joined the search just for fun. They decided to take Gonzo to see a very wise professor. Professor Ronzo was teaching her advanced bubble blowing class. She stopped and listened to Gonzo's question. I know who can help you, said the professor. We'll ask the wisest and weirdest one of us all, the great Garbanzo. The professor telephoned the great Garbanzo and explained the problem. The great one agreed to see them all in his laboratory. When they arrived at the lab, the great Garbanzo was waiting for them. He was standing next to a large machine. Gonzo, this is my Anzo meter, he said. This marvelous machine ties shoelaces, shuffles cards, makes strawberry milkshakes, and answers questions. Describe yourself to the Anzo meter. It will tell you what you are. Gonzo thought for a moment. I'm blue with some feathers on top of my head, he said, and I'm very handsome. The Anzo meter sat silently. I think it needs more information, said the great Garbanzo. Gonzo thought a little longer. Hmm, this isn't so easy. You can brush your teeth and sing the Itsy Bitsy Spider at the same time, pointed out Gonzo. You like tuna fish sandwiches with ketchup, said Momzo. You can blow a bubble shaped like a pepperoni pizza, added Professor Ronzo. One by one, Gonzo's friends spoke. The Anzo meter began to make a whirring noise. After a while, the whirring changed to a rattle, and then to a kerchunk, kerchunk, kerchunk. Dinner? 